Hello everyone and welcome to Traffic Corner Tuesday. My name is Nancy Crow and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for SPAC Consulting and your host for today's session. Before we would begin, I'd like to remind everyone of a couple housekeeping details. Please mute your mic uh, to minimize the background noise during the presentation. And also, I would encourage everyone to join the conversation. So please uh, and enter your questions in the chat function on your screen and we'll be answering those throughout the presentation. Also, I want to take a moment to thank you for participating in today's session. We started these websites at the end of 2016 to share some of our expertise with others in the industry. Um, and we've received a lot of positive feedback, which is why we've continued them. And as a thank you for t attending today's session, we're going to be offering the preliminary traffic assessment for those people who are attending today's session. So stick around to the end to learn how you can get a copy of your free sample. I also want to mention that Traffic Corner Tuesday webinars are brought to you by SPAC Consulting, which is part of the SPAC Enterprise family of companies. Uh, the SPAC Enterprise was started out of a need to um, find traffic data collection products and engineering tools and services for our clients. SPAC Enterprise consists of a group of six traffic engineering related companies including Mike on Traffic, an engineering blog, CountingCars.com, an online store selling traffic data collection products, SPAC Consulting, of course, a traffic engineering consulting firm. Traffic, uh, excuse me, SPAC Academy, an online store for digital tools for transportation professionals. Traffic Data Inc., a traffic data collection firm in the Midwest. And finally, tra TripGeneration.org, an online store for free trip generation data. We've also just released our May Traffic Corner Tuesday webinar, so look for some additional communications over the next weeks on our roundabout and convenience store webinars in May. Finally, I'd like to introduce our two speakers for today. Mike Spack is the president of Spack Consulting and is the recognized industry leader of traffic studies. He is a graduate of the University of Minnesota, past president of North Central section of the Institute of Transportation Engineers and is a fellow of the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Since 1996, Mike has led over 1,000 traffic engineering projects. During the past two decades, Mike has founded four companies, including SPAC Consulting, and he is the creative force and principal writer of the industry-leading blog, Mike on Traffic. He is also an accomplished author with articles published in industry publications, as well as several industry manuals that are used by engineers around the world. Please welcome Mike Spack. Also joining us today is Vernon Swing. He's a senior traffic engineer at Spack Consulting. He has over 30 years of traffic experience, has a passion for eminent domain projects, and specializes in traffic impact studies, signal design, and mitigation design. During his career, Vernon has owned his own engineering company, worked at the Washington State Department of Transportation, and has worked as part of a large full-service engineering organization. His diverse work experience has given Vern insights into the challenges both of private engineering firms and public agencies, and it helps guide him to create unique solutions for his clients. Vernon is also a regular contributor to Mike on Traffic. Please join me in welcoming Mike and Vern. Hello everyone, Mike here, and uh, just want to touch base we're getting some comments that the audio is cutting in and out a little bit uh, can you hear me uh, is this clear or am I still cutting in and out if anyone can put in the chat please let me know hmm, still cutting in and out uh, so bear with us here while I replug the microphone and see uh, what happens there Okay, test. Uh... Test. Okay, how is that? Is that any better for us on the audio? Hello. Okay, I'm getting a no, so I'm hoping that our audio is okay. Uh, Dave thinks it's still cutting in and out.
Okay, I'm pumping up the volume and we are shutting off everything inter internet related in the office. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so let's move on. Mike's back here and Vern Swing. And uh, first of all, I want to introduce Vern. Uh, he's our new traffic engineering manager. He's been with us a couple years. And I'm excited to have Vern here. Uh, he brings over 30 years of experience. Uh, he's worked on both coasts, been licensed in more than 30 states, uh, done work in the Caribbean. So it really brings a, a national level of expertise to the team. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Vern. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to chat with you guys uh, and gals. Um, just thought I'd give you a, uh, a just a short bio on me uh, beyond what Nancy had to say. Uh, um, I, you know, I have had the opportunity to, to throughout my career to work on some uh, fairly interesting projects. Uh, in particular, I started out uh, working on a lot of ITS type uh, projects on the West Coast and being out on the cutting edge. Um, and as time has gone on and I focused more on, on uh, development work and, and uh, engineering work for cities, uh, more of my focus has been on, on you know, getting things designed to fit within uh, current standards. Um, and, but I've always had a passion for, for looking at the future. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, being, being over with uh, the guys here at SPAC where, where we're all very collaborative, we're all uh, looking at what's coming uh, is, is exciting. And uh, frankly, I feel it's probably one of the reasons, uh, one of the best reasons to be here in that I can provide better service uh, for my clients. Excellent. Thanks, Vernon. Vernon and I go back uh, about 15 years. One of the first studies Vern did uh, was in the city of Maple Grove when I was the traffic engineer back there. So Vern and I have been talking a long time uh, about collaborating. So the first thing uh, we want to get into is, uh, so we're doing a preliminary traffic assessment. We're going to go through exactly what that means. But first we want to start with why and what is this. Uh, it's basically a one-page preliminary memo from us that should take us about an hour to put together. The purpose here is to let our clients know whether they're on the development side or on the city or county side, kind of here's our quick assessment of the development being proposed and here are any red flags uh, that we foresee. Uh, it's our, uh, based on experience, both Vern and mine of if you, if you have mediocre or even bad news, you should bring that to your client as soon as possible <laughs> um, to, to let them know and to react. And uh, if you go through a whole traffic impact study and wait until the very end and submit a full study and there are surprises in there, uh, we've found uh, no matter public or private, you end up with some upset customers. Yeah, and, and to, to Mike's point, you know, when we first started looking at this, um, they, you know, our, our initial looks at this were, were on behalf of, of private uh, development um, because a lot of times they walk in with a concept site plan and, and you know, they want, they want some input on that. So when you're putting your proposal together, it seems like maybe the best time to fire back at them, hey, you know, your access might not be best. You're, you know, you could have a problem here. There should be, there's a cra possible crash in information going, you know, out there that's that's not in your best interest. And and uh, you know, it's it's basically our idea that we want to encourage our clients to get us involved early before things get to get to the point where it's difficult to back up. Yep. And so we're offering this to all of our clients and we've started doing this. We're doing it for free. Uh, even if the development doesn't lead to a traffic study, we're doing it for free because we want to be that trusted partner. Uh, as people familiar with my work know, we always lead with value and we believe in sharing. And like Vern said, we want to be that first step in the process, uh, whether it's before they need a proposal, after they've hired us, we go through this assessment right away for a client. 
So with that, let's dive into the different components and show you what this one pager looks like. So to start off, uh, we've got a title block, uh, just calling it a preliminary traffic assessment uh, that details out the project. So for this one, it's a project in Brooklyn Park, Min Park Minnesota for a light industrial concept. The third line details the location, and then we just give a quick date of uh, the date we're submitting it. Um, and then what we, you know, what next thing in there is, is uh, what, what exactly we're, pro what information we're providing um, uh, for evaluating uh, the site from a very initial uh, look at it. So we'll, we'll give them information as to whether or not the access locations are, are appropriate, necessary, insufficient, etc. Whether or not uh, geometric changes are necessary, such as adding turn lanes or, or uh, you know, splitter mm -hmm. islands or those kind of things. Whether, uh, you know, in based on traffic volumes, whether we might have to uh, come up with some uh, variations to the type of traffic control that they're anticipating. Um, whether there are multimodal opportunities, such, you know, are there trails around, are there bus bus routes in the vicinity, um, those that type of stuff will I will identify quickly, and then more and you know certainly on on the side of uh, developers, uh, they always want to know uh, how how big a study do you need and and how can they avoid doing that. So uh, usually uh, this is one of those ideas that we put in there is to. Uh, you know, this is this is a big deal, or it's not. So these are the five categories we evaluate when somebody sends us a preliminary plan. Uh, with the multimodal, we sure want to flag: Do we need to tie into sidewalks and trails or upgrade lighting? And then Vern talked about the traffic study. Uh, we do not fully scope out a proposal for a traffic study at this stage, and right. we will be truthful if it doesn't need it. If we don't think it'll need a traffic study, we just we flag that in this section as well. Um, but you'll see as we get through it, we do flag the trip generation calculations, and that is a tip-off for how big of a traffic study we would need if we're going to be recommending one. So then the next section uh, is actually the part that probably takes us the most time to research as we put together a little table just giving the existing conditions of the few roads that are bounding the site so uh, the first column is, of course, the street name. Then we come up with the designation. So is it a county road, city road, state road? Uh, the one that takes some digging, especially when we're working out of state, uh, is what are the daily traffic volumes? With that, we are not going out and collecting any fresh data. We're just looking, can we find historical data online? Uh, we flag how big the roads are, how many lanes is a two, four, six lane road, are transit facilities available, yes, no, and bike ped facilities, kind of a yes, no. And, uh, and then once, once we have all that information there, we, we take the uh, concept site plans that we have and, uh, and basically whether we use our own data from ITE. I mean from, from uh, tripgeneration.org or whether we use ITE data, We'll do a quick uh, trip generation uh, uh, assessment in terms of, you know, daily numbers, um, AM, PM numbers, and and uh, we'll also uh, look at uh, what ITE might recommend for uh, peak parking characteristics, so that the um, the land user will have an indication as to as to whether or not they've got enough parking or or not. Yeah, so this is a preliminary calculation that we're not going through and calculating internal trip and pass-by reductions. Right. We're not giving them a full table of a breakdown of all the uses they may have on site. Um, we're not even flagging out, it, are we getting the data from our tripgeneration.org or the ITE trip generation manual. Um, we're just giving them kind of our first cut and again this is what we do whenever we're preparing a proposal, we go through and we need to come up with the peak hour trips anyways to help scope out the study. So with our spreadsheets, this is a five to ten minute exercise to get the in the ballpark uh, trip and parking generation numbers. 
and we feel it's important with uh, we've had past traffic corners and blogs of just how much excess parking is in the world mm -hmm. and how parking demand is actually seems to be going down that we, we want to start to flag we're not connecting all the dots of saying you have twice as much parking as you need on a site but by providing the parking numbers here early hopefully <laughs> folks are getting to understanding hey maybe we should propose the minimum here on site or maybe we should be going in for a variance this starts prompting some of those discussions some of those discussions especially you know with with some municipalities have have some outdated um, parking requirements and and most of the time staff is aware of that and this this will allow uh, the end user to to begin that conversation and and to start to point to some some uh, you know real numbers or real estimates so that so that there's some validity to that conversation. Mm -hmm. Ben, yeah. uh, Ben's asking, what's a good resource to look at for peak parking estimates? Our tripgeneration.org spreadsheet, we also do parking calculations as in, in that, so there's a lot of good data there. Um, ITE has, has uh, you know, like they have a, a trip generation manual, they also have a parking generation manual, and then of course uh, ULI has, has a, a parking generation manual as well. Yep, that's the Urban Land Institute. Um, and kind of run into different jurisdictions, have different preferences. Um, right. But, but obviously we're a fan of the data we're collecting because it's it's new and it's current. Um, both exactly. the ULI and the ITE uh, manuals have some pretty dated data points in their, in their compiled data sets. Um, but uh, trip generation is free. Uh, if you're going to be doing this a fair amount, I would recommend you pick up either the ULI or the ITE uh, parking generation manuals. ITE, in my experience, is a little more conservative. They're higher numbers than yeah, ULI. Yeah, it varies depending on use, but yeah. Okay. So then the last couple of sections here. Uh, you know, the, the, what we also we'll do as part of this is when we look at a site plan we'll look for we'll look for uh, possible internal issues that we can pass on to the uh, to the uh, end user and uh, you know so sometimes that could be a conflict with a drive-through lane um, and and a parking field you know I've actually seen site plans where they have the drive-through lane going the wrong direction so that the passenger is required to do the ordering, um, <laughs> and uh, it, so I, you know, oftentimes that kind of feedback is is appreciated. <laughs> yes, and uh, that's a second step to this. We'll, we'll do a quick overview. And are there any giant flags? But uh, we've talked about before, and I've blogged. We have a checklist of internal issues we go through. Um, and we try to do that soon in our traffic study process, again, to flag any issues. We want to get those to the designers as soon as possible. Um, okay, Ben just had a follow-up. but So the reference here, this uh, red box section as we go down below the table talking about uh, forecasting, uh, the reference, just we flag out any details on the site plan we actually reviewed. Because right. when we're getting these site plans, the versions are changing pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Seems like uh, developers have half a dozen or more concept plans before the one they officially bring to the city. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, oftentimes, uh, you know, we'll be looking at at uh, we'll be looking at at a a uh, say it's a resident high high density residential building, and what we look at will say perhaps have seven, eight stories, and, and by the time uh, we get to, to the end, it may be down to five stories because of height restrictions or shadowing issues or other things that come up. Um, so it's important that, you know, we also identify what it is that we're, you know, looking at right now. Yep. Uh, and then the last section, <laughs> uh, we did not hire a lawyer to write this paragraph, <laughs> but uh, we do in layman's terms say this is not an engineering report they're preliminary calculations we're not signing off on this as registered licensed professional engineers uh, basically this is our initial impression 
and uh, please don't turn this in as any kind of final report to a city or county for approvals. Um, and then also we give our contact info that this is intended to be the first step in an ongoing conversation. Um, so we always include our email addresses of the person who did the assessment, whether right. it's me, Bryant, Vern, Max, uh, whoever's doing it in the office. Um, Tony asked a question here. That's a that's a great one. How many times have we gone back and ever evaluated our own project after the TIA was done, the traffic study, and the development was fully functioning? Uh, I've done it a couple of times, and I blogged about. Uh, I'm blanking on who did it down in Texas, but went back and did a trip generation study after the fact on one of his developments. But mm -hmm. Tony, you're absolutely right that we don't go back. Uh, often enough. No, and I, and I think it would be a good part of our education, and, I, and I've written about this, it's just, you're right, it's hard to do because no one will pay you to do it. Um, yeah, when I've, when I've gone back and, and done uh, re-evaluations, it's been when I've been working for, for uh, municipal clients that have, have, for example, looked at uh, uh, putting in a, a, uh, a signal coordination plan, for example, and, and you do a before study to find out how long it's taking everyone to drive through a corridor, and then you do a second one and see whether or not there, it was worthwhile, if there was you know, an improvement, if there was a dollar improvement. Um, and I've also uh, looked at, at doing, you know, I've done some of that with some of my private clients that want to start their own trip generation uh, information. So when they come through and they, you know, for, um, for example, uh, so some of the uh, larger uh, um, general merchandise stores uh, have their own uh, methodology, their own development guide, and in that there's trip generation information that they have collected from, bef from after type studies. So, but I can't think of other situations that I've been involved in. Uh, so with that, we've had a few questions. Tony, Ben, thank you. Are there any other questions, uh, please use the chat to type, type those in. Uh, and while you're doing that, um, wanted to say thank you and uh, We'll send you this actual Brooklyn Park template. Uh, we'll send it out to you so you can see our verbiage, uh, what we've come up with. We're doing this on all of our projects with our proposals. Whenever uh, any of our clients have a study or a site plan they want us to review, we're happy to, happy to spend the half an hour to an hour to do this for free. Uh, and we think it would be great if others in our profession started doing this. Plus, we think it's a good service for your clients. Um, so go ahead and text 44222 and text in traffic corner or email Nancy uh, so you can see what we have put together. And then of course uh, if you have a, a concept plan, a live study coming up, uh, we're happy to talk to you and work through uh, a specific assessment of your site. Vern is here. Uh, we're spreading out to working around the country. Um, and I'd be, you know, I'd be very happy to take a look at what you have and just give you my, my, uh, my two bits, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I certainly uh, would like to see whatever gets done in, in the world be as successful as possible. So, um, Okay. So Ben asks, what's a preliminary traffic assessment look like for an intersection improvement or roadway improvement as a municipal agent? I, I don't think that would fit into this kind of template we've developed. This is definitely more development driven. Um, but it would be very reasonable to look at daily traffic volumes. Yeah, I'd say daily traffic volumes, maybe, uh, maybe pull up some crash records. Um, and do a quick assessment of either that intersection or that road just to tell you are you are these intersections in the gray area of they may need a traffic control upgrade do a, a signal or a roundabout and generally what kind of is are we looking at a two three four lane divided not divided right. road yeah is a road you know as you look at it is the volume is the volume today something that would suggest that that the roadway should be widened uh, from two lanes to two lanes with turn lanes to, to you know possibly four lanes or four lanes with turn lanes or 
you know, by the same token, is it, is it something where at one point you had, you had several lanes and you want to uh, give the road a diet mm -hmm. because the traffic volumes have reduced? That's the type of thing one could, one could you know, give a first blush look at yep. and say, yeah, I think you got, you got uh, reason to change it. Yep, and I would actually, we've done this for a couple of our client cities where they've had us go through and just identify all the four lane undivided roads in their jurisdiction, which are some of the least safe roads typically, mm -hmm. and look at daily traffic volumes and just do a quick cut. Are any of them candidates to be converted over to a three lane section with a road diet? And that literally is just a couple of hour exercise in most cities. Yeah. And uh, we'd be happy to do that for any jurisdiction that want, wanted us to do that for them. Yep. So we're bumping up against our time here at 1 o'clock. Uh, as always, we're happy to hang on for more questions to go past the time. Uh, but our last slide here is just coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll be talking about roundabouts, and uh, Bryant and I will be presenting uh, there on May 9th. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. Uh, we had about 60 people show up today. Uh, the last webinar we actually hit our maximum capacity of 100 folks. Uh, so if you are interested in roundabouts, I suggest you log in early about 12.15 to make sure you get a seat. Um, if we bump into our 100 person or site maximum for a few times in a row, we will upgrade to uh, go to webinar, but it's about four times more expensive than go to meeting. Uh, <laughs> and since we're doing this for free, we want to make sure there's actually demand out there for it. So I uh, hope you'll tune in for roundabouts. And okay, uh, seeing another question from Daniel, be sure to cover roundabouts with pedestrians. Uh, sometimes this issue keeps roundabouts off the table, I'm assuming. And, Yes, absolutely, Daniel. Uh, roundabouts in some circumstances aren't seen to be quite as pedestrian friendly as uh, traffic signals, so we, we will be sure to hit on that. Yeah, P particularly for, for uh, ADA type um, compliance issues. Okay, so thanks everyone. Hope you enjoyed it today, and we'll see you next time. Yep, thanks everybody.